Hello, welcome to the Math PLP A Plus Tutor Training. In this video, I'm going to take you through some skills on how to be an effective peer tutor. Before you start, make sure that you have the note taking guide. You can get that from, from one of the Math PLP teachers. All right. The first thing that I want you to think about is what you think makes a good teacher. Now you have had a lot of experience in school. So here are some things to help you get to those characteristics. Think about a favorite teacher from the past. It could be a high school teacher, middle school, elementary teacher. Think about that teacher. Another thing to think about is think about your favorite subjects classes that you've been in, just subjects that you've liked that have really sparked your interest. You can also think about projects that you've done and perhaps the teachers that have led you through them. What were the characteristics that, that those teachers showed that made you feel like that they were a good teacher for you? Did they ask good questions? Did they make you think? Were they nice? Um, did they have supplies in their classroom um, when you needed some? Uh, were, were they knowledgeable about their subject? Um, were they polite or funny? Think about what makes you feel good in a class and what makes you want to learn. Now, on your sheet, I want you to write down at least five characteristics of what you think makes a good teacher. And again, this is from your experience and what kind of teachers are effective for you. So pause the video and do that now. After you made the list of those characteristics, then there's a question just below. Of those characteristics, I want you to think about tutoring in Math PLP. Which of those skills do you think will be easy for you to employ as a tutor? And which will be more difficult? And write an explanation about that. All right, as you tutor this year, I want you to keep those characteristics of what you believe makes a good, effective teacher in your mind. Now granted, you are not the classroom teacher, but you are going to serve a role that's just as valuable in this Math PLP program. I'm going to take you through now what I call the ABCs of peer tutoring. So the first point says that teaching or tutoring, it is an art. And there are ways that you can, you know, be good at it and not so good at it. Um, tutoring will help you learn the class material better. So you're going to remember if you're working in algebra or geometry, and I know you've had those subjects, then that's just going to help you become even better at that material. Tutoring will help you feel good about yourself as you help others. As humans, that's just something that happens when we put ourselves out there. And then just keep in mind that teachers and tutors do not always know the answers. So it's okay um, if a, you're posed a question and you're not sure, you can do your best and then there will be other tutors or teachers that you can call in for help. You can also let the student know that you're working with that you're just not sure and sometimes that's a good time just to figure it out together. So the A of the ABCs of peer tutoring stands for ask specific questions. That's where the A comes from. So here are some things to, a question to avoid. Avoid asking <laughs> if you're walking around and you see a student just sitting, do you have any questions? Because usually to really get us going, we need to have just something specific to answer. So ask a more specific question. Well, what number are you working on? What concept are you working on? If they have a problem up in front of them, well, which part of this are you working on? Or you could even go more broad. What's your topic? What's your concept? And then what's the assignment um, that you are? Ask specific questions, and then that will get the conversation rolling. Now take a minute on your note-taking sheet to write down the A of the ABCs of peer tutoring. 
And then think about when you could use this strategy of asking specific questions. I've given you some examples, but you've been in math classes and you have had math questions before. Um, so what kind of specific questions would help you? In the ABCs of P, peer tutoring, P stands for a certain type of communication strategy, and it's called being in the adult mode. There is a communication model that utilizes three modes, what we call the child mode, the parent mode, and the adult mode. Now, we're not, I'm not going to go into an explanation of the child mode and the parent mode, but if you're thinking about how people are acting, and no matter what age, so an adult could be functioning in the communication realm of being in the child mode, and a child can function in the parent mode. But what we're going to focus on is what we call the adult mode. So if you're thinking of a stoplight, um, I think of the adult mode as the green go mode. So this is going to be a place where if you communicate in the adult mode that you will be most effective when you're working with your peers um, in the capacity of trying to help them and tutor them in math. Now for the adult mode we're going to go over just some general characteristics of what someone is displaying when they're in the adult mode. So just in general what their demeanor is like and then specifically facial expression body language, voice, and then language, actually words and phrases that you're using. So if you're in the adult mode, in general, you're going to be in a rational and reasonable way of thinking. Your facial expression is going to be focused but open, not, you know, staring off into space or um, looking upset, but just focus and open. And especially when you start working one-on-one -on -one with a person. Now your body language is you want to be calm and then have listening body language. So that would mean what we would call an open posture. So if you're standing or sitting next to the student that you're trying to help, make sure that your arms are not crossed. If they're crossed, then consciously uncross them. Someone who has crossed arms is communicating even if you don't mean to. You might just be cold, but you're communicating to the person that I'm closed off to you. So unfold those arms and then just lay them to your side. Also, if you lean forward a little bit, make eye contact, and then in general just be calm and let the person ask their question. When you respond, again with your voice, just be calm, direct, and confident. It doesn't mean that you always have to know the answer. You can be confident in saying, I don't remember that. Let's look back at an example or let's look at your notes. And then the language that you want to use is language that communicates an understanding of where they are, not necessarily what they're working on, although hopefully you will be knowledgeable on that, but just that you're listening and then understanding their question. <clears throat> And then under the, the point of admitting, again, that's just being honest and, you know, help. If you don't know something, admitting that you don't. And if you do, um, then just going on and calmly, you know, asking the person question, questions about the thing and helping them come to the answer on their own if they can. So, in general, the ABCs of tutoring, that second letter, the B, you want to be in the adult mode. So, think about your general disposition. You want it to be rational and reasonable. Things like, you know, not overly assertive, um, not joking around too much. Uh, have a, a calm facial expression, calm body language. Um, 
and uh, voice and words as well. And then just a few things is that it's common in our society to make jokes that are rude and, you know, but are, but are humorous. But that is really masking rudeness with humor. And so just make sure that as you're tutoring, not to do that. The other thing is that sometimes the students that you're working with will be frustrated. So as much as you can, you just remain calm and don't feel like you need to take on that frustration. Also, know when to walk away. So if there is a time when you're working with a student and it's not being effective or that student is getting frustrated, it's okay just to say, you know what, why don't you work on this a little bit and I'll go help someone else. Um, or call someone else over. Perhaps suggest that they, you know, go ask the teacher who's the manager at the time. Or maybe there'll be another A-plus tutor that knows um, something that you all are stuck on. Take a minute now on your note-taking sheet just to jot down some notes and answer that question over being in the adult mode. And then finally, the letter C of the ABCs of peer tutoring is to lead your person to the answer. Calmly lead your person to the answer. Ask questions. Try not to just tell them because in general, it's going to be a better learning experience for them if they can just have help figuring out what they're not getting. <clears throat> if you get to a person and they say something like, I just don't know how to do this, then ask those specific questions. Which part? What do you think you would do? Questions like, if you did know, what would you say? And then my favorite is, if you had to guess, what would you say? Because then that takes the pressure off. And I'll say that, you know, eight or nine times out of ten, the person will guess correctly. Or if the person says, I just don't get it, then again, ask them a question to help them explain what they mean by that. Tell me what you're thinking. Or if they say something like, I don't have a clue. Well, again, just ask a, a more a specific question, a clue on how to do what or which part. Here are some try-to hints that will help you calmly lead the student that you're helping to the answer. So try to pause after asking a question just to give them time to think as you two are talking and working through you know, their question that they have. Avoid asking yes or no questions. <clears throat> And then also try not to answer your own questions. Give them some time. And if they say something and maybe give you a short answer or just to help them with their thinking, ask them why. Avoid saying no or that is wrong, um, even if you know that it, that it is wrong. What I would say is if, you can, if they give you an incorrect answer but you can know that it's close, you can state that. You can say, well, if we were looking for this, that would be right, but we're, gonna, we're looking for that. Um, and then in math especially, ask the person to get paper and pencil and write down the problem. Because sometimes that's half the battle, is the student is trying to solve an online practice problem um, just in their head. And if they were just able to write it down, and then actually write through the process of solving the problem that they would get it. So pause the video and answer the question over the letter C of the peer tutoring, of the ABCs of peer tutoring. Calmly lead your person to the answer. On the back side of your note-taking sheet, look at the first list. These are the Math PLP a Tutor Expectations. Be on time every day. At the end of each hour, have one of the PLP teachers sign your tutoring log. So this year, we are not going to sign post-dated tutoring logs. You can just keep it in the PLP crate. We'll have a folder for you. And then every day, the students are given a few minutes to pack up. It's at that time that you'll grab your tutoring log, you'll write down 
the time, the date and the time that you were there, and then the three of us will be around, and you can just have one of us sign it each day. Realize that you are an essential part of Math PLP, and we value you. Be sure to communicate, too, if you will be absent with any issues, any change in your schedule, things like that. And then remember that you will be walking the line of peer and tutor. And so you will most times be in the adult mode helping the students. And of course you will have friends in the class, but you will need to function as, you know, as, as a teacher. Now I wanted to just go over a little bit about the PLP program to make sure that you understand. PLP stands for Personalized Learning Program. The students in this class learn in a blended way. So that means um, with technology and then with uh, being teacher taught. So they will have videos where they are taking notes over each of their concepts and they'll have to fill out those note taking guides. Then they will have short what we call teacher talks where one of the teachers will meet with the students for 5 to 15 minutes to go over um, some additional problems. Then they will do online practice for each concept and take online quizzes. And at the end of a unit of study, they will take a paper pencil test and also cum cumulative tests that we call spirals. So as a tutor, your responsibility in the day-to-day -day math PLP program will be to work each day with the students. Go around the room and answer questions and just remember your training, to the ABCs of peer tutoring. So to ask specific questions, to be in the adult mode, and to calmly lead students to the answer. We'd also like for you to enter online quiz codes after checking to see that a teacher has initialized that concept's notes in the student's note-taking pa packet. Um, quizzes need to be started 15 minutes before or the end of the hour. So if it's later than 15 minutes to the end of the hour, the student will have to wait until the next day because they will be expected to finish the quiz that hour. And then finally, you can give students new unit packets once the unit test is complete. <clears throat> just be sure if you do to help the student fill in the start date and then the target completion date. What the teachers will be doing is that as a teacher we will work either as a manager or be giving teacher talks during the classroom period. Teachers will initial st students note taking packets after we conduct those teacher docs. And then teachers will initial students study guides, which is the assignment that the student will complete before they take the unit test. Unit tests, just so you know, must be started by five minutes into the beginning of the hour and have to be finished by the end of the hour. And again, just remember that we will be signing your A plus tutor forms each day. And so we won't be signing post dated tutoring forms this year. Again, thank you so much for being a Math PLP A plus tutor. This program would not be what it is without you. And then just make sure that you read and sign that tutoring agreement on your note taking sheet and then give that to one of the teachers. Thank you again.